Microsoft made some changes to the system tables in SQL 2005, and I want to show you those. They'll tend to surprise you a little bit if you're coming from the old SQL 2000 world. If you'll notice, I've gone into the Server Management Studio, and on my server, if I expand databases, you'll notice that there is a folder for system databases. Now, before we go any further, let's talk about these system databases. If you ever plan to certify on Microsoft's database certification, you'll need to understand these. First of all, the master database contains basically all the information that SQL needs to operate uh, the SQL application. It's the metadata for the entire application. For example, there's information in here about every individual database that exists on the server, every column and every table and so forth. So the master database is very important and you want to make sure that you get a regular backup of that. And I'll remind you of that four or five hundred times when we get to the backup videos a little bit later on in a different part of the course. So the master database is really the brains, so we want to really back that up and be careful with it. The model database is kind of interesting. Anytime we create a user database, what's actually happening in the background, SQL is making a copy of the model database. Now the purpose of the, the model database is to provide more or less a template for all new user databases. This saves time, makes it more efficient, and it also gives us an added advantage in that if we want the database to always be created, any database that we create, that is, if we want them to be created at a certain size with certain features, we can go make those changes to the model database and then every database that we create will automatically have those characteristics set at uh, creation time. So that's kind of a neat trick and a time saver. The MSDB database, for you MASH fans, this is the Radar O'Reilly of SQL Server, this keeps everyone who has any kind of scheduled activity or job where they should be doing what they should be doing. All of the automation that you can set up that you'll take a look at later on in the course is stored in the MSDB database. And this is obviously very important that the MSDB database be backed up once you begin to create jobs and alerts and various automation type features. So that's what the MSDB database takes care of for you. And then the TempDB, this one's very interesting. From time to time when Microsoft's working or when SQL Server's working, it needs to temporarily store data. Let's say it has a large complex thing to do. It will stick part of that data off into a, a database area and then come back to it later and it uses the tempdb for that. Now the tempdb can be used by programmers as well, just keep in mind it is temporary. On a server restart everything in the temporary database goes away, so keep that in mind. Now let me show you the surprising part. Uh, Microsoft's done something not really bizarre but just a little different than what we're used to seeing in previous versions of SQL. If I expand the system databases container and then expand the master database container, you will notice that I have both a tables container with system tables and a views container with a lot of views in here. And as I scroll down you can see there's quite a few views. Well here's what's happened. Microsoft has made some pretty significant architectural changes. One of the big ones is, is it's possible to create more than 32,767 users, groups, roles, and data types, and so forth in SQL Server 2005. It wasn't possible in previous versions. Now, that brought up some issues about querying users, querying certain metadata, and I won't get into it. What I will tell you is to go out and do a search in books online on compatibility views because that's exactly what these system views down here are called compatibility views. Go do a search on books online and just read about these things and it will show you how to query these things properly to get information. Now what Microsoft has done, if you'll notice information schema dot check constraint, let me make this a little wider, come on down here information schema tables. In the past programmers attempted to utilize some of the data in the master tables. It's a common trick, as a matter of fact. However, it became a problem because programmers wrote a lot of T-SQL code that accessed information from master tables. Then, in subsequent versions of SQL Server, Microsoft changed the system table names and structures, and now the code didn't work. So what's happened now, Microsoft builds these information schema views, for example, information schema columns that you can use to search columns in the database. Now, the Microsoft promise, if you will, 
is that no matter what happens to underlying system tables, they will always expose columns to this information schema columns view. So anytime you need to access data in the system tables, use these information schema views. Other information, you'll notice this sys schema views down here. These provide backward compatibility to data that we're always used to being able to pull from system tables in previous versions of uh, SQL. These are provided for backward compatibility. And one very interesting note, anything that is new, any kind of new feature in SQL Server, the metadata has not been exposed to us, not even through these uh, schema views or, or uh, system schemas. So at this point, you're not able to get that stuff. So anyway, that's your master databases or your system databases. I just wanted you to be aware of those and aware of the, that one fairly major change in how Microsoft's choosing to expose this metadata to us now.